Whew. Low blood sugars. They are super scary sometimes. And today I want to talk about a story of probably my most severe low blood sugar that I've had and kind of how that affected me after. Uh, and yeah, I want to tell you about that story. First of all, I'm Justin, this is Diabet Tech, and I talk about diabetes tech, news management, my own experiences, and I come out with videos every Friday, podcast episodes every Monday, podcast platforms, and on YouTube. Like and subscribe. Now, I went to Fire Island a year ago, and I was staying at a house with a bunch of new people. I like kind of barely knew one person, but everyone else was new. And, uh, you know, I find that kind of stuff exciting, but sometimes when you have diabetes, it can be a little overwhelming because people don't know you have diabetes. So then you have to explain like why you're giving yourself insulin sometimes and why you need low snacks sometimes. And I guess I'm kind of a little more extroverted uh, and also out about my diabetes, especially since I'm like a diabetes content creator. So. I tell everyone I have diabetes and uh, I also let a few of them know where I keep my glucagon in my travel case in my bathroom that I was staying in. Now, we had a fantastic time and on one of the last few days, we went all out. We were out in the pool, we were drinking, we were running around. Um, it was just a really exhausting day. And we ended it with ordering pizza, which if you're watching, you have diabetes, you know pizza can sometimes be a little overwhelming because sometimes you don't give yourself enough insulin and then you go high and you stay high because it takes so long for it to hit your bloodstream. So that could happen like three to five hours later. Anyway, I gave myself what I thought was like the right amount of insulin, uh, but I was also drinking. And maybe that kind of affected where things were about to go. So. Some people decide to go out, a few of us decide to stay home and watch The Birdcage. So we're having a little movie night and all of us fall asleep. It wasn't until like 30 minutes later that I woke up to a vibration on my watch, a Dexcom alert that said low. When your watch says low, it means your glucose levels are so low that it can't even calculate what that number is. That's probably below 50. And so I instantly knew what was wrong. I also felt a little woozy. Luckily, I was close to the refrigerator. I ran over there. I grabbed some orange juice, put it in a cup. I drank it. And as I started to walk back towards my friends, I got so dizzy. I started to like fall on the ground and pass out. But as I did, I yelled to my friend in the other room. Luckily, it was loud enough and he woke up and he found me on the floor. I had fallen with my glasses on, I actually bent them, and I was barely coherent. A few things. Luckily, I did tell him where my glucagon was, so he could go and get that if I was unresponsive. I'm glad I got that orange juice in my system. I was able to come to somewhat quickly, but it still was, I was still very out of it. And he got me more orange juice. He also got me pretzels and he was just giving it to me and um, taking care of me. I feel so fortunate to have been around someone so caring who was my nurse in that moment. Um, another person in our group who's also a nurse happened to walk by. He came up a few minutes later and he helped out too. And it was so incredible the support I received. and. You know, I'm so glad I let them know that I have diabetes. And I think that's so important for people who are going on trips, especially with new people, to let them know, I have diabetes. This is what you do in the case of an emergency. And luckily, we didn't need to, to use the glucagon. Um, but that would have been accessible if needed. But now I want to talk about kind of what came out of that experience, which was what I call and maybe some people would be like, you can't call it this, but I call it a form of PTSD. It is a form of post-traumatic stress, maybe not a disorder. I'd say for two months after that experience, I was so afraid to give myself insulin, what I need to stay healthy and keep my, my levels in check. I found that I would 
grab food and I'd give myself a little less insulin than I normally would, maybe even like 10 to 20% less. And who would have figured it caused me to have high blood sugars. And it was the first time I really was affected in that way where I didn't want to give myself insulin. So, um, Luckily, I did grow out of that and I got more bold again with my insulin control. And I think there are a few reasons or ways that I have been able to do that. One is, and I was at the time, but is trusting in the closed loop system I'm on. I'm on an automated insulin delivery system. Probably many of you are too. There's Omnipod 5, there's Connect IQ uh, or Control Q, I always forget, with T Slim, and then there's Medtronic system that's supposedly getting even better with 780G's algorithm. I use DIY loop, which is a non-cleared FDA system. It's also closed loop and it's fantastic. It does a fantastic job and I've been having fantastic blood sugar levels. But um, fully having your trust in the system isn't enough. Uh, also monitoring um, or, or rather addressing when things happen and also having Dexcom alerts, which saved me in that moment. For some reason, I didn't hear the phone alerts, but I heard or felt my watch alerts. So also having a smartwatch on, especially when I'm drinking is, is so key. It, it has been incredibly key. I could also see my blood sugar levels, boop, boop, boop. I'm fine. Low snacks, always having them on me, in my pocket, on the table near me, anywhere, and enough to cover a meal. So what I mean by that is if I have a really fatty meal, 125 grams, but I wind up only eating half of it, that means I want to have maybe 60 grams of carbs, fast acting carbs on me. So I normally have four of my fruit leathers on me, four of my fruit leathers on me in my bag. That way, in case I need to use them, I can eat as many as I need to and I could always re-up. Having enough low snacks is key. And I found myself not having enough low snacks before and having panic attacks, which is another story, uh, Broadway shows. <laughs> because that. Um, but I think all of those combined with telling people who you're staying with, who you're gonna be around for a good amount of time that you have diabetes and this is what you do in that situation where my glucagon is or what low snacks help, like orange juice, um, that will keep you safe. And I haven't had any close calls since, but I think that all of this um, technique that I have now, all these tips that I use, especially having enough low snacks, um, has really helped me. And I hope it helps you. I would love to hear your stories of scary lows or kind of how you prevent them from happening, how you talk to others. I think people watching this would also really appreciate to hear more, more ways that people kind of address those situations because not everyone's like me. Some people are more introverted and don't wanna be as out about their diabetes and that's understandable, but I'd like to hear from you how you address these situations and how these situations, if you had a severe low, have caused any post-traumatic stress. I'd really love to hear that. So make sure to comment below with your stories. And as always, I've got videos coming out every Friday and my podcast comes out every Monday. So subscribe here and you can subscribe on those podcast platforms. Until the next one, I'm Justin and I'll talk to you later.